On this episode of Lassie's Pet Vet, a pet paramedic. When I first started telling people I was a pet first aid instructor, I got some strange looks. Who prepares pet parents for the worst. I knew that he was choking, and I just did the Heimlich on him. All this and more on another heartwarming episode of Lassie's Pet Vet. This is Lassie, the world's best known dog, and I'm Dr. Jeff Werber, her personal veterinarian. Welcome to Lassie's Pet Vet. The bond I have with my own pets and my four-legged patients has been a real source of love and satisfaction. Lassie's Pet Vet is about that bond, how to strengthen it and be the best pet parents we can be. Coming up, tips for keeping paws off the furniture, a fun fact about Lassie's heroism, and a woman trained in animal emergency. When you think of CPR, or cardiopulmonary resuscitation, the first thing most people think of is giving mouth to mouth to a human. But here's a woman who teaches how to give CPR to your pets. Pay attention, this might come in handy. Accidents can happen, and sometimes they can happen to your pets. How you handle the situation before you can get to the veterinarian can make all the difference in the world. My name is Denise Fleck, and I help others by teaching them pet first aid and CPR, as well as disaster preparedness for pets. It's Denise's mission to prepare pet parents for those moments when a matter of seconds can mean life or death, because she knows firsthand how it feels to be unable to help a pet in need. On the eve of Valentine's Day in 1997, when my husband and I got up, our yellow lab, Sunny, who was just always full of energy, couldn't get off the floor. We weren't sure what was wrong with her, but we feared picking her up because we didn't want to cause her more pain. We didn't know it at the time, but she had ruptured three discs in her spine. It was such a helpless feeling, not knowing what to do with your furry kid when they were in need of help. That feeling was so strong, Denise quit her job and dedicated herself full-time to learning about and teaching others pet first aid. When I first started telling people I was a pet first aid instructor, I got some strange looks. People said, you put your mouth on a dog's snout. And I must tell you, their snouts are a lot cleaner than some of the human mouths I've seen. But what is pet first aid? For starters, it's a lot like human first aid. And some of the most common animal emergencies bear a striking resemblance to their human counterparts. To stop bleeding, we immediately start direct pressure on the wound with gauze or clean cloths or whatever we have at our disposal. We're going to add more gauze on top, but we're going to keep that direct pressure going. If that doesn't work, we elevate the limb, and if that still isn't stop the bleeding, we can press on a pressure point. The pressure points are located inside each leg and at the base of the tail. Once the bleeding stops, we would bandage them up and get them to the vet. And like human kids, four-legged ones sometimes swallow things they're not supposed to. One of Denise's students shares her experience. All of a sudden, the dog comes in and he's starting to wheeze and nobody could figure out what was wrong and I knew that he was choking and I grabbed him like you would a kid and I just did the Heimlich on him and he shot a piece of his dog food, believe it or not, and it went straight across the room, smacked right off the wall. If my stuffed friend here was actually a human and I came up behind him, I would put my fist underneath here, cut my other hand over it, and pull like this towards my own chest. However, with our animals, we don't want to pick them up in this fashion because then whatever's caught in their throat, gravity will send downward. So we want to keep them on their own playing level, straddling them if possible, and if anything, tipping them downwards, but doing that same maneuver. Denise takes her students through any number of scenarios, usually beginning with the most frequent and most dangerous one. With heat stroke, permanent brain damage and death can happen to your dog or your cat. Does anybody know the number one cause of heat stroke? Being left in a parked car. In a matter of moments, on a simple 85 degree day, with the windows rolled up, the steering wheel can get to be 160 degrees, and that back dashboard that a lot of little dogs like to lay on can become 181. But rather than scold the offenders, Denise goes directly toward the solution. The body's too hot so we need to cool it off, but we don't throw them in an ice bath. We get out the garden hose, and then we hose down our pets. 
What you want to make sure you do is actually get the skin wet, get the belly and the underside and the pads of the feet wet, rather than just concentrating on wetting down the fur. If you don't have water, you can just pull them into the shade and let them lay on a piece of cool sidewalk. What you're about to see is an important tool in saving a cat or dog's life. CPR for dogs is very similar to humans, but it has to be done somewhat differently because obviously the location of their heart is different from ours. If you're to take your dog or cat and rotate his elbow back towards his chest, that points basically to where the heart is. On a human, we generally check a pulse at the wrist or in the carotid artery. But for a dog or cat, we have to find the pulse in the femoral artery, which is located inside the thigh. If at any point there is no pulse, we need to begin CPR. Basically, we do 15 compressions, two breaths, 15 compressions, two breaths, and after every four rounds of that, we check for a pulse again. Denise's motto is very simple. Pet parent, know thy pet. Well, I've had numerous pet sitters who have written me after taking the class that they've been able to diagnose illnesses in their pets. Most recently, a pet sitter was watching a Dalmatian and noticed the Dalmatian was drinking an unusually large quantity of water. So when the owners got back, she encouraged them to go to the vet, and sure enough, the Dalmatian was diagnosed with diabetes. If animals are truly our best friends and our children, then it's important we understand how to care for them. People like Denise remind us that for all our pets give to us, it's not difficult for us to make sure they have everything they need.